everybody, this is Miss Kelly, and today I'm going to walk you through one of the park math practice tests. Um, here's my email address, my contact information. You can always call the school and ask for me, Miss Kelly, or you can send me an email, whatever is easiest for you. So today we're going to look at math. I have another video where we look at English, if you're interested. Um, okay, so what we need to do is go to the park practice site. So this is the address. If you'd like to write it down, it's park.pearson.com slash practice dash test. A lot of times, honestly, I'll just go to Google and I will just Google park practice test and you can find this fairly easily. So today we are going to do math. If you've watched either of my previous videos, you've heard me mention before that right now the only practice tests, full practice tests that are available are the English Language Arts Performance Based Assessment. So that's the test that's meant to be done at 75% of the year. And the math practice tests that are available are the end of year practice tests. And the end of year practice tests are more like what our students would traditionally uh, be used to with a focus on more multiple choice kinds of questions. So we are going to click on math practice test. There are answer keys here that are available as we go through this because I am limited um, in time. We are not going to worry so much about getting the correct answer. We're just going to look at the functionality of the program. But if you're interested, please feel free to go through all of these as much as you want and use the answer keys. So here are the tests that are available. Currently, Maryland will be using grades 3 through 8 for math and then Algebra 1 for math. If you have a DC student right now, it sounds like they'll be using all those tests plus geometry. Um, I don't know of anybody right now who's going to be using the Algebra 2 or the Integrated Pathway. All right, so for the English test, I picked grade 7, so let me pick grade 7 again. Pick something in the middle. And we are going to do the standard test nav version. There will be a screen reader version of these tests. Um, if you watch my intro to PARC, then you know that they're talking about the screen reader being available for all students on the math test. All right, so here's grade seven. It tells me that there are two sections. There are 32 total questions, and I just click the blue button to start the test. All right, so here there's a non-calculator part of the test, and then there is a calculator part. So we're going to take this part first. Okay. All right, and we have some of the same functions that were available on the English language art test. Let's look at the question. It says select each statement about the graph that's true. Select all that apply. So there are five different answers here. I might select two of them or three of them or maybe even all five of them based on my understanding of the question. So notice that's different than what our students may have been used to in the past. They're used to kind of having one right answer, whereas here it's saying there are multiple right answers. Okay, so I'm just going to select a couple and let's go on to the next question and I'll show you um, some of the functionalities of the program just like I did in my English language arts walkthrough. And here's another one of those pesky questions. We'll select all that apply. So let's just pick a few of those. All right, so over here we have the magnifier, which I guess might be helpful to some students. We have the line reader. That's my favorite. Can be adjusted to just look at part of the screen at a time. Um, I think. I would have liked this as a student. Uh, it's not super, super easy to use, but maybe that's because it's the test version. Uh, we have to toggle those things on and off. We have the answer eliminator, so maybe I am sure that answer A is not one of the choices, nor answer C. So I can select that. Again, I have to toggle off. 
There's a ruler that's available that can be used. There's a protractor. Can be used, can be moved around, and we go back to our pointer. And just like on the English language arts test, if we're not sure about this question, we can always flag it and come back to it later. Okay, so here we have a table and a question where we're going to type our answer in. So instead of the previous questions, we select the answers. This time we have to actually type the answer. It tells me to enter my answer as a decimal. So let's make a guess here. And let's keep on moving so we can see the other questions. Notice there's also this little button here off to the side that says Exhibits. I'm going to click on that and it's going to give me the math reference sheet, which in the past during MSA and HSA it was passed out with the test. So it's the, the reference sheet that all students get the formulas. Okay. So as a student I would just click on this when I need it and click off of it when I don't need it. Here's another one of those questions. We have to select each correct answer. Go back to a couple of answers and we'll keep going. Again, we're on the non-calculator part of the test. Here's another question where we have to type in our answer. What's the number of minutes Devin swam each of the five days last week? So I would use each of these bits of information to get my answer to the question. So let me leave this one blank and I'll show you what that does for you later when you think you're done with the test. Here's a drop down. So students are selecting the correct number from each drop down menu to complete the equation. They can use scratch paper on this part of the test. So they all have a pencil and scratch paper and they can use to work out these problems. There's another one where we're entering our answer into the box. There's another one. All right, this one is another one where you answer your answer in the space. But I was a little confused by this one because you can't just type in whatever you want. Well, you can, but it's not going to let you put in a fraction or anything like that unless you know to go down here and select this. So let's say I think my answer is one half. And I need to select this so it'll go down to the next box. Let's say my answer is, see, that gets weird. Let me go back. Okay, let's say I'm a mixed number and my answer is two and one half. This might be a little difficult for students to manipulate. So this is something we will work with them on because they'll have to use this kind of um, equation writer to make their answer clear. <coughs> Another question, this time it's just a multiple choice, but it's kind of a higher level question. So it's asking them in which situation for th could this quotient be used to answer the question. Let's keep going. So I want to get onto the calculator part of the question. So another type in the box, another drop down. <coughs> Excuse me. Keep going, another select all that apply. Another select all that apply. And guess what? <laughs> Another one. Okay. When I finish each part of the test, it's going to tell me that I have unanswered questions. I really like this about the test. The problem is it's going to give me the option to either go back or to continue. And, you know, we're going to work with our students so they'll go back instead of continue. So here it shows all of my questions. And remember that question number five that I didn't answer? It'll let me go back specifically to this question number five and answer it. It'll also show the ones that I flagged. Remember that number two, that even though I answered it, I flagged it because I wasn't quite sure. And then maybe I can go back and come up with a different answer. All right. Let's go on. Let me go to the last question. We're going to go ahead and finish. It's going to continue. It's going to give me a warning because once I go on, I can't come back. And I'm assuming at this point we will collect the calculators. Or I'm sorry, we will pass out the calculators. All right, so here's the calculator part. And I'm going to speed up a little bit because I can only do a 15 minute video. All right. So what we have is a question that would, again, 
require a calculator. So the students would answer this probability question. It's another one of these equation editors. So it's asking me to enter my fraction. So let's say my fraction is 2 over 5. I'm going to keep going. Again, I'm going to have this reference sheet that I know to go to. I'm going to have the same things up here in addition to the five function calculator. So it, my understanding is if a student has a calculator on their IEP, they can use a regular calculator or all students will be able to use this calculator on this portion of the test. All right, there's part A and part B questions we're typing into the box. Here's one that looks a lot like those English language arts question. So we've got part A where it's asking you to answer the question and then part B which will be related to the part A question. And again a reading passage that students will have to scroll up and down through. Here's another where they have to enter their fraction, the correct answer. Okay, More part A and part B questions. Let me just flip through some of these. Another part A and part B, this one has two different question types on the same page. So we have to enter our answer in the box. We have to drop down our answers down here. Selecting which statement best compares. So two answers might be kind of right, but there's going to be one that's the best answer. Another enter the fraction. Another part A and part B. Part A and part B. Okay, let's look at this question. Select each box on the table that identifies the two-dimensional plane sections that could result from a vertical or horizontal slice through each clay figure. Okay, so it's going to let me select what answers I think are correct. And go on. Here's a part A, part B, and a part C question. Oh, and a part D. It's a lot of parts. Okay, multiple choice, in the blank. Oh, I like these, the plotting questions. So the coordinates of point P are three over two. So I have to plot that point. So if I'm remembering this correctly, I'm gonna go over three and up two to plot my first point. There's the coordinate of point Q are X six. And it's gonna ask me to plot point Q. Alright, another part A, part B, and here's our last question, which statement best predicts? So notice that these aren't really your traditional multiple choice questions. They may look like that, but if you actually read the questions, there's more to them than that. It's going to tell me again about my unanswered questions, and it's going to tell me that once I submit that I can't return to my test. So I'm going to submit, and then that's it. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, um, please contact me. Again, this was the end of year math test. I'm very interested to see what the performance-based assessment will look like for math. Remember that there are tons of practice tests on this park site. So if you'd like to try algebra or you'd like to try, you know, maybe a lower grade, all the stuff is here, and don't forget that the answer keys are also available. All right, thanks everyone for watching, and if you have any questions, please let me know.